Good morning. Welcome back. Okay, how many times, be honest, how many times this happened and just makes you insane crazy? You ask you, what do you want for dinner tonight? Oh, I'm not really hungry. Well, I'm not either. Why don't we just have sandwiches or snack and everybody's on their own? Okay, cool. So you kick back, watching TV, playing your bubble game on the computer, and all of a sudden, and you're like, somebody here? Go to the door. Oh, looky there. There's your friends. Just dropped in. Didn't call you. Didn't let you know they're coming. And, you know, it's right around dinner time. So it's like, well, crap, I'm going to have to feed them. What am I going to feed them? Because I didn't make anything and I don't have anything. So you do that mad scramble. And if you're like us, we live out in the country. You can't order a pizza, which is gross anyway. You should always have the stuff to make your own. So I'm doing that today for you guys. And this time we're going to wow them. And you're going to go to the islands. And it's only going to take just a few minutes. Not very long at all. First things first. I've got this skillet getting hot for the chicken. And we got to get the pineapple ready. Now, I'm always telling y'all that you should always keep stuff on hand. One of the things is pineapples. Now, the beauty of this dish is you ain't going to wash no dishes except for two pans. That's it. Pretty easy. Okay, so you're going to cut the pineapple in half all the way through and keep the, keep the green like that. Then you're going to cut a little edge off the back, just like that, so that the pineapple will lay flat. This is what you're going to serve dinner in. This is your bowl right there. That's your bowl right there. If you don't cut a little flat spot on the bottom, it's actually kind of funny. If you don't like the people that much, you can just sit there and watch them try to chase their food all the way around the table because it'll just roll around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all the guts out of the pineapple. I've done that one, and I want to show you how to do this one. If you look inside the pineapple right here, there's almost a natural little line. You follow it, but you keep your knife pointed in, not down, because you don't want to puncture the, the outside. All right? And you just follow it all the way around, cut out the guideline, just like that. Then get it place started, and hopefully you have a real ripe pineapple. And you say, well, how do I know if I've got a ripe pineapple? Okay, well, let's just take a minute detour and show you that. Pineapple juice. Look at the green and look at the yellow. Yellow and especially at the bottom. A pineapple ripens from the bottom to the top. So the higher up and the more yellow you see up in here, the riper and juicier it's going to be. All right? So what we're going to do today is, and yes, I'm using an ice cream scoop. Easiest way in the world to get this out of here. See? What did I tell you? Look at that. Or you can sit there and pick it out bit by bit with a knife. And folks, remember you're, you're under the gun here. you got to come up with something quick to feed these people that don't have the common decency to call or text you and tell you that they're going to come in. They just pop in because, oh, well, hey, I bet Lynn's cooking tonight. Let's go see what she's got. Okay. All right, so now we're going to set these away over here. So that's going to be for later. That's going to be for later. That's going to be for the rice, actually. Uh, so now what we're going to do is... We're going to get our chicken going. That's going to take like five minutes. Get it out of the way. So, if you have kids or grandkids, I'm sure you always have uh, chicken nuggets. Try not to get the breaded nuggets. Try to get tempura nuggets. That's what these are. If you use chicken nuggets, you can do that too. That's fine. I'm going to turn that up. There's just a little bit of oil in the pan. A little bit of vegetable oil. And most nuggets, you know, are already cooked, so all you have to do is really heat them up. So right now, we're just going to get them hot and go from there, and then we'll doctor them later. So now, let's work on the rice. I've got this pan getting hot, too, underneath it. All right, so first thing we got to do, we got the pineapple chunks done. Now, I'm going to do a shallot. If you don't have a shallot, you could do a green onion. I'm going with what I have. Remember, you're going through the house, finding stuff that you have to feed these people. You're not going out, running out to the store or nothing. So you have to use your common sense. You have to figure it out. What have I got that I can put together? If you have to email me or text me and ask me for some help, I'm always available. Always. I don't mind at all. Although texting would be better because I, don't, I only check my email once a day. So if you want me to answer you that in a few minutes, it ain't going to happen. But what you do is you look through your pantry, look through your freezer. Stuff you should always keep for emergency food, chicken nuggets. We're going to do a whole lot. I can show y'all 
gourmet meals with chicken nuggets. This is going to wow your friends right here. I'm just trying to get that. There it goes. I'm trying to get that outer skin off of there. These are onion. These are shallots out of our garden. Hang on. Husband's phone. He's taking a nap. All right. Really? Really? All right, got it. Got it. Sorry, it took me a little while. Ooh, my board's bending because it's getting hot. I've had it on there a while. Okay, so I'm gonna move it here. That's okay, it, it'll bend right back. It doesn't matter. I'm just moving it down here. You know how to cut an onion. Follow the ribs. Follow the ribs. If you uh, if you have green onions at home, like scallions, that, that would be absolutely perfect. If I were doing this for clients or company, that's what I would be using. And I'm just going to follow my lines on the onion, just like that. And we're going to put a film in there. This is super hot vegetable oil, just a little bit. Super hot. And now we're going to put in, I've got one bell pepper from my garden. I've got a lot of bell peppers, but I'm just using one bell pepper from my garden. Slice on the inside, not the outside. You're going to chase it around. And you just want to julienne it down. That means cut it into little strips. And then keep it. It's called chopping an onion. But I don't need a lot, just a little bit. You're doing it more for color than anything else. And they don't have to be perfect. In fact, the least perfect you get it, the better it is. This is a, uh, a uh, red uh, patch chili. You can use an anatine chili. You can use a Thai chili. You can use a jalapeno. You can use a serrano. You can use your favorite, yeah, habanero, ghost pepper. Doesn't matter. Whatever your favorite pepper of heat is. If you really don't like the people, get a hotter pepper. The hotter the better. Use a scorpion pepper on there. I guarantee they'll never drop in unannounced for dinner again if you do that. I'm just saying. Okay, so we're going to get that just percolating a little bit. And we're going to add, if you don't have any chilies, use the crushed red pepper seeds. If you don't buy the thing of uh, pepperoncinis, these, these, if you don't ever buy them, save all your pizza. If you're one of those people that orders pizza, save all the pizza packets. Use those. Put some garlic. The mince garlic. And if you have coconut, throw some coconut in there. If you have lime juice, throw limes in there. It doesn't matter. I wouldn't put the lime though, really, because I'm going to put pineapple in it. I'm going to use the pineapple. This is just um, a coconut lime seasoning. And I'm just putting a little of that in. You don't have to do that. I have it. I have it, okay? That's why I did it. That's doing wonderful, 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 wonderful. Really, really good. I know, I'm sorry, I'm in the way. Alright, that's perfect. That's perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our plain old white rice. Again, if you have it in your freezer package, just pull the package out. If you don't, do it like I did. There we go. And just make a fresh batch. And if it's stuck together, big deal, you're going to unstick it. It'll unstick. Trust me, it will unstick. But you want to get it all coated in all that goodness we just created. If you don't have vegetable oil, use canola oil. Use sesame oil. However, if you use sesame oil, if you use sesame oil, you want to make sure, make sure you blend it with a vegetable oil or a olive oil, any high temp oil. And the reason is it burns very, very quickly. And then it tastes so bad and smell, oh God, the smell is so gross. Burnt sesame oil. Again, when I talk to you about things like this, it is from experience. We all start somewhere, you know. Okay. 
trying to get the big clumps undone. If you want to leave it in big clumps, you can. You have uh, Thai rice balls. Let's say you make a rice ball. And that would be even cooler. And that would be even cooler. I'm not going to get it perfect, but that's okay. That's okay. It's doing fine. Look at there. It's doing beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Ooh, that's isn't that pretty. That is very pretty, but it's going to get prettier. All right, so now we're going to take some of that pineapple. We're going to take some of our pineapple that we had. Save the rest, put it in the blender, add some rum. You got Mai Tais, you got. Uh, uh, pina coladas, whatever. Save it for booze. Or freeze it. Freeze it. And uh, you got little uh, pineapple popsicles that are really good. The kids like them. Do not ever feed it to your chickens. You never feed citrus to your chickens at all of any kind. So don't do that if you have chickens. And I'm just kind of, see how I'm kind of rough chopping it. I'm not going crazy, not making it perfect. Just kind of rough chopping it around. a little sweet and spicy rice. Oh, so nice. To go with our teriyaki chicken. Right. If you want more, you can use more. Just depends on how much you want to do. Last, I drained off some peas and carrots. Those are always going at the very end because they'll mush. It's a can of peas and carrots. You can use frozen ones. In fact, I would prefer you use frozen ones, but you know, we'll take what we can get at this point. This is turmeric. Gives it a pretty color, pretty taste. Salt. on low too. We don't want it real high. And when you're making pineapple fried rice like this, and this is just a package of sesame oil. I'm going to just do it, drizzle in there. Again, it's leftovers from a Chinese food takeout, so just whatever it is. All those little packages you keep in the drawer or in the fridge, everybody's got them. Okay, now, just this pineapple fried rice alone, take this now if you wanted to, throw some shrimp in it, throw some chicken in it, throw some ham in it, you know, lunch meat, chop up some ham, boom, you've got a complete meal just in the, the rice. But ours is a side dish, so we're not doing that because we have our uh, teriyaki chicken we're working on over here. Sugar and molasses, that's hot. Okay, we're going to switch gears. Y'all can see this one better. Okay. We're going to switch gears. And to this, I'm going to add some, uh, some teriyaki sauce. And then you just want to coat it all up in teriyaki. And if you're using your cast iron skillet at this point, you just shut it off. Just shut it off. That's all you need to do. Just shut it off. Because it is now done. It is done. Okay, so. We have teriyaki chicken and we have pineapple fried rice, correct? Are you with me still? Have I lost you? Don't worry, you're never lost. You're always just right here with me. And I spend most of my time lost, so don't worry about it. We'll find each other. Okay. 
That's going to be for decoration. If you had some cilantro, you could sprinkle over the top. Chop it up, sprinkle it over the top. Or parsley, chop it up, sprinkle it all over the top. Uh, sesame seeds, sprinkle it up. Mix them all up and do them all. I don't care. Pepperoncinis. That's what we'll do. We'll do some pepperoncinis on top, too. Okay, so we have our little pineapple boat. Isn't that cute? I'm going to need a couple big spoons. A couple big spoons. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take some chicken and fill up half the bowl with chicken. Fill up half the bowl with chicken. Just like that. Okay? Just like that. Then, then, you're going to take the other half of the bowl and fill it with the rice. Doesn't need to be perfect. You want it kind of sloppy. Because it looks really good, really blue owlish. Okay, and we're gonna take some, I'm gonna take some sesame seeds. Come here. There's some sesame seeds over all of it. The rest over the rest of the chicken. Take a little pepper seeds and do the same thing with it. And there you have your uh, teriyaki chicken bowl. You can clean it up a little bit if you want to take those off, it's fine. I don't, but I'm going to hear it from somebody. I know somebody's going to say something. Why'd you leave it out like that? Well, there you go. So, what do you think? That took us less than 25 minutes to start from start to finish. Now that's pretty easy, pretty quick, pretty good. And I can tell you right now, it is pretty delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Sometimes I'm so good I amaze myself. Alright. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. And as always, you can find the full recipe at Down Home with Lynn on Facebook. And I'm fixing to start, get off Facebook and do a Down Home with Lynn website with a blog with all the, the recipes on it. So look for that. Have a great week. I'll see you Wednesday or Thursday. We'll be, doing, we'll be cooking again on either Wednesday or Thursday. So have a great week.